Glycosidase enzymes accomplish the same transformation as acidic hydrolysis, the cleavage of glycosidic linkages, with the addition of one molecule of water. However, glycosidases are unique in that they accomplish the transformation with great stereo control. Single diastereomers of monosaccharides can be isolated as reaction products, and the enzyme is able to differentiate anomers and react selectively with a single anomer. In this webcast, we'll investigate the most common glycosidase mechanism, which is analogous to the exocyclic bond cleavage mechanism of mutarotation that we've already seen. First, let's examine the behavior and products of a commonly studied glycosidase, lysozyme. Lysozyme attacks bacterial cell walls and initiates cell death by cleaving polysaccharides at glucosamines, which contain amine groups where we see hydroxyl groups in ordinary sugars. In particular, lysozyme cleaves the glycosidic bond between N-acetylglucosamine, or GlicNAC, and MERNAC, the sugar you see here. The bacterial cell wall is a polymer composed of alternating GlicNAC and MERNAC monomers, so lysozymes are highly effective at destroying the wall. In addition, we see that lysozyme accomplishes its chemistry with retention at the anomeric carbon atom. The mechanism we propose for this process must explain the observed retention of configuration at the anomeric carbon of MERNAC. The active site of lysozyme is found to contain catalytically active acidic side chains. In particular, glutamic acid and aspartate residues are proposed to work together in a bifunctional manner to catalyze glycoside hydrolysis. Introducing the substrate, we can imagine cleavage of the key glycosidic bond via general acid-assisted beta elimination. This produces an oxocarbenium ion intermediate whose faces are diastereotopic. To explain the retention of stereochemistry observed in the products of the reaction, we can invoke a nucleophilic addition of the aspartate residue at the electrophilic carbon of the oxocarbenium ion. Although this addition is reversible, it helps explain how the enzyme blocks the alpha face of the ion while it sits in the active site awaiting a molecule of water. After the freed, departing glicnac leaves the active site, a molecule of water is able to enter and, with help from glutamate as a general base, can attack the oxocarbenium ion on its beta face. Water does not attack the alpha face because of the blockage by aspartate. After nucleophilic addition by water, the freed mernac sugar is able to leave the active site.